second meeting. Is there a motion to approve or amend or discuss or whatever? Um, I, I have an amendment to, to uh, just uh, include uh, two sentences uh, between the votes on resolution 2326 and 2327 to uh, include a paragraph that says, Commissioner Counter proposed an alternative to resolution 23-27, which is attached. The resolution was defeated. And then they can include the vote of the commissioners. Uh, who seconded? Are we okay? Yeah. Um, so how are you going to do this? You're just going to have so it inserted after the meeting? It would just be a paragraph that would... Well, what do we do it this way? I'd re, I'd, why don't we put it off, have the staff insert it, and at the next meeting we'll see. That's fine, too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, then we'll move on. <coughs> Our next order of business are the ballot access determination. We have, okay. we have a report from the staff. Uh, two uh, judicial districts, I believe, are both delegate petitions that were at issue. Uh, one is in the fourth JD, and that was an invalid declination that was received by the board uh, due to incomplete information on the declin or the, uh, the declination itself. And the second one is from the ninth JD, where there were specs uh, regarding, I believe, the conduct of the meeting, which we have no ability to rule on. Uh, since that's beyond our authority. So the recommendation is continue to have the petition valid, uh, and we will not take a position on the validity of the um, objection. So those are the two that are before us today. Is there any so I, discussion? I, I moved the report, but I do have some discussion. I, I just wanted to okay. say uh, I, I question your use of the words beyond our authority. Okay. It's beyond the scope of what we usually do. And I carefully read the resolution that was drafted, and I think the resolution is, uh, we're not, I guess it's the determination. Right. And I think the determination is properly drafted. Okay. Um, uh, and, yeah, I, I apologize for being so picky, but I just don't want to concede that we don't have authority. Usually do it. You mean your position is we do have the authority, we're just choosing not to exercise it? Yeah, it's beyond the scope of the ministerial. But then I would, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what the it's distinction is here. But, well, you know, I'm, to be honest, but. In other words, we could hold a hearing and make a determination, but, but we don't, and local boards don't either. And I think that's appropriate, especially since the court proceedings are de novo anyway. Okay, well, I'm not sure I agree with your distinction, frankly. I don't think we've ever, I think we've always had a position that's beyond our authority, that's beyond the scope of what we do as a ministerial body, is to look into, you know, what happened at a meeting and whether or not the minutes correctly reflect what happened at the meeting, because that would require us taking testimony and it would require us determining the truthfulness of the, of the uh, uh, people coming before us, and that's just beyond our ability. But, again, I don't want to get into any, Discussion about it either. I think we agree this is not something we're going to rule on. Right. Um, and, and as I say, the draft of the determination is fine. Okay. We're voting on the determination, not what Peter just said, right? Right. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. But, but I want to know what I say is very important. I know, I, and I, I so agree. it's good to discuss things I say because those are important concepts. Even <laughs> <laughs> so I don't take umbrage at having that discussion because I, I, I agree that what I say means a lot. All right. But anyway, well, you're right. We are. Ruling and voting on the determination, not on what I said. On the that is correct. On the so there's a motion. <laughs> there's a like second. It? And unless there's any discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's passed. Okay. That done. We'll move on to unit updates. Our first one is the executives. Uh, Kristen and Wright. Good morning. Good afternoon, commissioners. <laughs> Uh, the co-executive directors work with staff throughout the agency as well as coordinated with county boards of elections and other state agencies on several issues since the August board meeting. New York State Board of Elections accepted filings for judicial nominations from the 3rd through the 7th as well as the 9th and 10th judicial districts. Several dozen candidates were nominated across all four parties. Filings went smoothly and were reviewed in accordance with SDOE policy. 
Uh, earlier this month, uh, we attended the Election Commissioners Association of New York. They held their summer conference in Niagara Falls. Commissioners from across the state met to exchange information, receive updated guidance, and provide multi-jurisdictional support. Uh, these twice-a-year conferences provide both the state and county board of elections a vital opportunity to interact in person on a large scale. New York State Board of Elections was in attendance and provided presentations on election security, legal guidance, operations, grants, and FOIL requests, as well as holding a seminar to combat disinformation. Speaking of combating disinformation, the State Board of Elections was made aware through multiple counties of individuals who purported to be election officials going door to door accusing voters of committing crimes based on an incorrect understanding of the state voter database. SBOE takes attempts to both impersonate election officials and intimidate voters seriously. All instances provided to the State Board were referred by us to state and federal law enforcement. As we continue to receive reports, we will continue to refer, refer them appropriately. Any member of the public who has been approached in this manner should call their local Board of Elections to report the incident. Uh, so that was last week and the week prior. Uh, moving on to space planning. Construction work continues on the fifth floor. Space has been cleared of all materials. Demolition is close to complete and build outs to match a new floor plan are ongoing. Uh, Bi-weekly meetings to coordinate between our agency and the four contractors continues. Uh, ITS vacated first floor swing space and uh, compliance, PCFB, uh, secure elections, and IT staff are settled in that space. The additional space identified at the last meeting of the first floor has been acquired and staff has been utilizing it. Uh, the 23-24 budget brought the fill level of the agency up to 210 employees. We are now at a critical point and require additional space in this building or lease space in another location. Our current allotment of space will likely force us to start implementing remote work schedules in order to accommodate the, accommodate the increase in staff. We expect, expect to start this implementation with PCFB and compliance the middle of this month. Uh, we continue to work with DOB and OGS to determine plans for the agency, either expanding in-house or moving to another location. Current direction would seem to indicate that uh, partner agencies are looking to acquire additional space inside the building for us. Uh, we have communicated and continue to communicate the commissioner's wish, wishes to keep the agency together, uh, which is the wishes of uh, the executive directors as well. Uh, as always, elections follow a complex calendar and we will ensure operations are not impacted. Moving on to OVR and AVR. Uh, OVR, we're pleased, uh, you know, online reporting, uh, excuse me, pleased to report online voter registration continues to be effectively deployed across the state. Since its inception through the end of August, including the standalone New York City system, a total of 3,270 registrations have been submitted statewide. We continue to work closely with county boards, county-based IT, and voter registration vendors to ensure counties can process data. <coughs> we continue to monitor usage and seek to raise awareness so that more residents access the system. Uh, AVR, as mentioned during previous board meetings, we are partnering with New York State ITS to implement AVR and the clearinghouse, necessary to transform informa uh, information efficiently between the state, counties, and the agencies. SBOE and ITS held our first official kickoff meeting last month. Uh, in anticipation, we continue to meet with all applicable AVR agencies. To date, we've met with uh, labor, health, NYCHA, Department of Motor Vehicles, Office of Temporary Disability Assistance. Uh, we're hopeful that we'll be meeting with SUNY and CUNY uh, shortly. Uh, we continue to anticipate a 10-month build-out and a three-month transition from ITS to the State Board. Uh, the timeline currently remains on track based on uh, the recent signing and all work. Uh, on to PCFB, uh, the integrated software solution which started as a PCFB-only procurement and will now be utilized by both sides of the house, continues to make its way through the OGS review process. SBOE and PCFB have met and communicated with Department of Budget several times in the last week, a week to answer any questions they may have regarding justification for the SBOE election systems acquisition. Uh, as stated previously, the PCFB has created manual solutions to handle matching claims and audits as we await the software solution. Uh, the website redesigned continues. Uh, WebNY completed an inventory of SBOE website. They held a project kickoff meeting with SBOE staff. 
Uh, our goal remains to create a more user-friendly experience and arrange the information and applications in a, a more user-friendly way. The redesign is ongoing, uh, and we hope to wrap up in time for the presidential election uh, 2024, approximately beginning of the year 2024. We continue to meet bi-weekly uh, with DOB, OGS, enforcement, and the executive branch. The co-executive directors and staff continue our monthly conference calls with the Election Commissioners Association. As I said earlier, we had no call in August because we were only person at Niagara Falls. And we continue to work on training and guidance to provide county boards with resources and tools to carry out their statutory duties. Looking forward to November, with the conclusion of this meeting, SBOE can send out the certification of the ballot by the September 13th deadline. Counties are required to certify their ballots by the 14th of September and to issue military ballots no later than the 22nd of September. We stand ready to assist all the county boards as needed. That includes my second report. Kristen, I pass it off to you for any additional items. Or no, I would, I would just uh, echo everything you said. And, you know, the Election Commissioners Association Conference, and we went on the offensive with the impersonation of uh, county officials because we take that very seriously. And I just think. People sort of look at us sometimes as, you know, what does bipartisan mean? But 99% of the time we agree and we're working together and it's, and it's very powerful. So I'm grateful for the staff and for our partnership. Has law enforcement taken any action that's public? Um, not that's public, but we did, as we said, we referred it to um, federal, state, and local officials. And we have... Um, Department of Homeland Security. And so far, there's been nothing. There's been nothing. I think, I think the details that we have thus far will be very difficult uh, to track down those exact people, but we've also, all the county boards are on alert mm -hmm. and are trying to get as much information as possible. Okay. Any other questions? Or No, thanks. And we'll move on to... Uh... Election operations, Amy and Brendan. Thank you, Commissioner. Level two. Okay. Um, in addition to a number of the things that the executive directors mentioned um, that we participated in, we continue to coordinate with other units um, on communication to our counties to collect required surveys. We prepared the certification for the general election. We've also conducted acceptance testing for seven counties so far and over 1,100 machines. And we've launched the Civic Roundtable platform, and we have approximately 50 counties currently participating. Brendan? I don't have anything to add other than uh, for those counties that are <coughs> uh, planning on getting machines or anything, uh, and the vendors themselves that are listening, please uh, let us know as soon as possible so we can schedule uh, all of that uh, acceptance testing and make sure that we have people out there. Okay, any questions? Comments? No. Okay, then we'll move on to Council's office, uh, Brian and Kevin. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, I have a similarly brief uh, report. Uh, we have a few updates on cases. Uh, we have the new um, it's Frenzel versus Moore in the Western District of New York. That's the federal uh, challenge of the uh, OTV statute. Uh, we were served in that uh, a couple of weeks ago. We have formally taken no position uh, in that matter, and we'll keep uh, an eye on, on a, that as it progresses. Um, we have been served as a necessary party and taken no position in uh, a pair of ballot access cases relating to judicial nominating conventions, uh, one of which was the determination we just ruled on uh, at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, in the line warming case, Brooklyn NAACP versus Kaczynski, uh, we are into the discovery phase of that. Uh, depositions have been scheduled in that matter and will be taking place later this week. We remain awaiting the decision in the Libertarian Party Wait, versus... Uh, on the end of who is being deposed? Uh, Tom Connolly will be being deposed tomorrow morning. And then the, they sought a deposition from the city board as well, but I'm not aware of the pro where, where that <coughs> request went. And that is still pending? Who they're going to depose, um, if, if they're even going to depose them from the city, I think has not been firmly established. Okay. Uh, the Libertarian Party case, the minor party ballot access case, they had sought a uh, saw certiorari at the Supreme Court. 
We anticipate a review of that petition around the end of this month, and presumably a decision on that will be made uh, sometime shortly thereafter. We continue to monitor a number of bills awaiting the governor's signature. Um, on the compliance front, we continue to work with our counties on the match program for local offices that is moving along very well. We have had 2,489 reviews completed since the last board meeting, and approximately 300 emails have been processed through the CF Info email account, providing various levels of assistance uh, as requested. And uh, that's all I have, unless Brian has anything to add. I do not. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Any uh, questions for counsel? Uh, what's the current status of the non filer report? So we have a. Uh, we have a draft plan that is being uh, circulated internally regarding uh, guidance deadlines and timelines for uh, publication. Uh, we, we have been circulating that internally. Once that plan has been reviewed uh, by all parties, we intended to circulate that among the commissioners for review and input. And so when do you expect that to happen? Um, that is a good question. I would say we can presumably have that before, you know, to discuss prior to the next meeting. Yeah, I think the, the objective is to have something in place moving into uh, next year so that for the January periodic, we would have a, a structure. Are you are you also asking about the current status of the July periodic in terms of numbers? Roughly, yeah. yeah I, it's, it's, I'm, I'm interested in knowing how many non-filers are out there. Right. So for the July uh, 2023 periodic, um, as of uh, the, the original um, the, the, uh, referral, uh, 2,944 referrals were made. Um, but as of 9-5... And, um, and when you say referral, you're talking to <laughs> and, and the <laughs> Division of Election Law Enforcement? Yes, entities that had not filed as of that point. Um, the division can certainly speak to exactly what they did, but they um, did emails and certified letters. And I believe as of 9-5, 2023, the number of non-filing entities had dropped again from 2,944 to now 1,293 um, mm -hmm. remain outstanding, which is basically 47% of the original delinquencies. Um, and that is in terms of an improvement in, in terms of the movement from the, the original number to the current number, that is a substantial improvement in a relatively short period of time. And so the July periodic, and we're now at the very beginning of September. And, and Brian, just to put that number in context, you said it's 1379 now? Uh, 1393. 1393. And, and how many committees all together should have filed in July. Yeah, I don't. I don't recall the exact number of committees. A number is coming into my head of around eleven thousand, but I don't remember. That's the gen that's the general area, but we can get the exact number for you. Well, so it's a little more than ten percent are are out of compliance. Right, and and among that number, I mean, it is fair to say, as has been pointed out, there is a certain number of um, of derelict committees, and because of the enforcement divisions. Um, care in um, diligently following up with the certified letters and the emails, the information that they feed back to us, although we haven't gotten it for this filing yet, uh, related to things that are undeliverable or bad addresses and things like that are definitely helping us um, you know, deal, with, deal with this problem. So, but, so that's the uh, July periodic specific numbers. And then Kevin is referring to, I believe, the, uh, the effort to pr uh, provide the list on, online. To in more, in more to easily, publish the not filer list, yes. In a more easily ascertainable fashion. <clears throat> okay, anything else for council? Then we'll move on to enforcement. Uh, Mike Johnson. Uh, I can, I'll can. i speak to the, the non filers and the numbers that, that we have. Um, based, and they're probably off by a little bit in terms of what Brian had said versus what we have. The numbers that you know we may show as far as active filers are concerned, we've got like 12,530 or so. For the July periodic, we sent out 
3,007 emails. That was on the 27th. And what we then did was on the 7th of August, we mailed out 2,009, excuse me, 2,295 certified letters to the treasurers, and then we mailed out 2,546 candidate letters to the candidates via first class mail on the same day. On the 5th of September, we had a total of 1,387 non-filers. What we then did to break that down even further is we looked at, out of that total, how many people missed five or more periodic reports? Because for, for our purposes, that was interesting. That's important because if you missed those, at least three or more within an election cycle, so to speak, I can then turn that into a hearing officer case where now use your penalty is $10,000. So what we've done is we've looked at that 730 number and just based on the derelict list that Brian is talking about, there's at least, there's about a hundred of them that need to come off of that. That then leaves you with 630 that fall within that range. Because of what happened vis-a-vis -vis COVID and, and how the election cycle got disrupted, what I decided to do is let's look at, let's take a time frame from 2020 to 2021. Let's see what that universe looks like. It turned out there were 82 people who, you know, 82 committees that, that made their filings. And drilling down a little bit further, what I was able to find out is based on that number, what does it look like in terms of committees that simply didn't do anything? It turns out out of that 82, we have 50 committees that basically registered and didn't file anything. No non-activity reports, no itemized reports, nothing. So what we're going to do is that list is going to be sent to, to Brian and Kevin because my thought was they can reach out and find out, did anything happen? Maybe the treasurer got sick, maybe someone passed. I don't know. So before I wrote these people into this, the, the universe of $10,000, fine. Let's see if there's a, a real rational reason as to why they registered and nothing was filed. After that number, now you've got roughly 23 committees that registered and filed at least one report. It was either no activity, an itemized report, or one report and have a balance. Those 23 committees we're now focusing on and we're going to turn those into hearing officer cases where the penalty will be $10,000 because you've missed at least those five periodic reports. What we're also doing is the individuals who missed at least one filing, we're reaching out to the court here to find out, as far as doing a mass judgment is concerned, what's the best way the court wants us to present these particular cases. Do you want them in tranches? Do you want them all at once? Because we don't want to overload the court system. So we're waiting to find out how they best want us to approach that. What we've seen too, um, with regard to non-filer uh, letters that we sent out, um, quite a few people were confused as to why they got the letters. And it turns out, I guess, and maybe Brian or Kevin could speak to it, but I guess back in October of last year, there, were, uh, there was a batch termination where I guess people might have gotten, you know, their committees closed, but they were part of a multi-candidate committee and the treasurers didn't take them off. So there was that issue people didn't understand, well, why did I get the letter? Or they would say something along the lines, well, I called compliance. In compliance, says I shouldn't have gotten the letter. Maybe that's the case, but my position is you should reach out to the treasurer of the multi-candidate committee and find out, A, 
why didn't they take you off, or B, why didn't they make the filing? We've heard from several treasurers of multi-candidate committees. One in particular, um, she wanted from me a, a letter of apology for sending out letters to each one of the candidates letting them know a filing wasn't made, and she felt that it should only have gotten to her. My explanation to her is the statute imposes a responsibility on both of us. I have to let the candidates know a filing wasn't made on your behalf, and you as the treasurer have a responsibility to make the filing. I fulfilled my responsibility. You did not. So. I think any apology should come from you to the candidates because you didn't fulfill your responsibility. Once we point this kind of stuff out to the candidates, it's, it's incredibly helpful and informative to the candidates. And essentially, the statute requires me to let these candidates know, hey, a filing wasn't made. So between what the statute says and what uh, Commissioner Casal had suggested, you know, letting the candidates know, it's making people aware. And once we deal with the individuals who are now looking at a $10,000 fine, we reach out to them and say, look, here is what you are going to be looking at. I will give you X amount of time. You either make that filing, and it'll be a very, very short time frame. If you do not make it, you will be incurring a penalty of $10,000 because that's what the statute allows for. Um, we submitted to Brian and Kevin uh, a proposed regulation for a, a fine structure in terms of those who fail to, to make a filing. The first day that you miss your filing, it's $50. And then every day after, it's $10. And I did not do just business days because you can file on a weekend. So it will be every day until once you reach a $10,000, once you, excuse me, once you reach $1,000, now I'm going to submit that as a judgment against you. Um, you know, I've heard someone say, well, I have a grace period. My position to that is, Show me in the statute where it says you have a grace period. Show me on the, the notice that the board puts out with regard to the schedule for making the filings. Where does it say you have a grace period? If I give you a date saying make your filing by, my position is this. You're already late. So if I file against you, make a, a hearing officer or, or file a judgment against you, if you want to say, hey, there are mitigating factors, I'll be willing to listen. But if I put a date in a letter and you have not done anything by that date, as far as I'm concerned, now you're being willful. Now you're, that to me, that's, you're demonstrating a willful failure to file. And at that point, I don't understand nor will I accept any reason as to why you haven't made your file. Okay. When do you think we'll see the first order to show cause? Once we talk to the court clerk and she provides us with, okay, here are the steps that we would like you to do. Because, I mean, in the past, and, and Peter would know, they would do a massive, you know, right. uh, I don't know now if the court is going to want that, and I need to find out from the tell us how best to proceed. Once we get direction from them, that's when it will start. We're already, we've already prepared the list of the 23 individuals who are going to be looking at the hearing officer matter with regard to more than three filings. We're, and now we're starting the list of who we're going after with regard to the judgments. So once we get direction from the court, then that process will start as well. Okay. I, I encourage you to follow up on that and not let it uh, oh, I go agree. into limbo. But thank you. It's a good report. Good.
you have other, other questions? I have a question, Michael. On the, uh, you gave us the report today on your uh, closed cases, and I got that. There's, there's also a quarterly report that you do, and I don't, I don't recall get, getting one recently. I was wondering where that was. I believe it was in the packet. I didn't get anything today. Is there supposed to be one in my packet today? I didn't get anything but the I'm closed case. I'm certain it'll get Because you have a quarterly report, right. right, that you're supposed to do for, I think, the end of June, which I don't think we've gotten. I think it was delayed because um, it was delayed because there were some staffing changes, and so the numbers had to be double-checked and checked. But if you don't have it in your packet, I don't. I'll make certain you get it. Okay, great. All right. Anything else? Okay, then we'll move on to uh, NVRA and uh, PIO, Kathleen and Jennifer. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Since our last board meeting on August 2nd, uh, the PIO has processed um, in August 85 FOIL requests were received, 82 of those 85 have been completed, three are still in process, and for September numbers just through the first few days, 13 FOIL requests were received, eight of those are completed already, and five still in process. Today is an exciting day in that we are launching our new FOIL platform, GovQA. It launched this morning around 9.30. This is a centralized platform to receive, process, and respond to FOIL requests. Previously, we've received them via email. This allows for enhanced tracking, allows us to view the analytics. Um, this will also save the State Board money. As, as Jennifer reported last week, we'll no longer need to be mailing out CD-ROMs of data. We will share our files right through the application. Uh, we have participated in workshops all summer long to set up our interface to the application and uh, participated in a live training session for both admin and power users last week. It was a recorded training for others to view. And we've communicated with enforcement to ensure that their website uh, redirects the updated link. We did a test earlier, and the new platform is working to receive those FOILs. For the board's website, we published a number of things since the last meeting, including updated statement of identity form lists that have been received. Uh, the ballot language for the st two statewide ballot proposals, um, an updated campaign finance filing calendar, updated FOIL page language, uh, the two press releases that the board has put out in recent weeks, and as Ray mentioned earlier, we continue to work on the complete website refresh. Uh, most recently, our PO PIO staff, along with IT, has been working with the New York Digital team uh, where they've demonstrated drafts of all of the website pages, and we remain on track for a complete release in January of 2024 of the website, as Ray mentioned, in a much more user-friendly experience. Since our last meeting, uh, PIO staff has conducted a virtual NVRA training for WIC uh, that had 104 participants in it. As Jennifer mentioned at last meeting, uh, we have um, come under contract with a new vendor for voter registration forms for 2024, and we did a kickoff meeting with them earlier this summer, but since the last meeting, we did receive our last um, small order from OGS to fill out our balance of registration forms for 2023. They were delivered mid-August to both county boards and to us here at the state board. As I mentioned with those ballot propositions, we have posted them to the state board website and they have been translated into the required languages. We've been working with language line and received our estimate and sent approval to get the audio recording of those five ballot props and those, um, those two ballot props in the five languages. And we've been in communication with New York Press Service to get those uh, placed in newspapers throughout the state in the required time frame. We are awaiting a quote from them currently. Along with election ops, we're sending an email to all the counties reminding them to re-upload their early voting and election day poll sites for the general election if they've changed uh, since the primary. Uh, we've been in communication with the Federal Voter Assistance Program since the last meeting, and per the request, we provided them with updated New York State-specific materials for their guide that they provide to military and overseas voters. And we also sent them our tentative dates for the elections that we'll be holding in New York State next year. As has been mentioned by a few units already, uh, both Jennifer and I attended the ECA conference last month. We did conduct two presentations there, one about grants, list maintenance, FOIL requests, and online communication, and another one along with uh, the Secure Election Center, Ben Spear, about mis- and disinformation. The counties really seem to take an interest in both the online communications and how to dispel mis- and disinformation, and we continue to plan to work with them about social media policies and content creation. 
We encourage them to pre-bunk bad information and explore methods of reacting to bad information once it's already out there. Uh, New York Citizens Audit did release, while we were at the conference, their report regarding the 2022 general election. Uh, we are currently drafting and finalizing our initial response to the claims made in this report. As you may recall, the State Board sent a response letter to its earlier report about the 2020 general election back in April. So we're going to do an initial response, uh, dispelling some of the claims, and afterwards, the State Board plans to do a deeper dive into their claim in a follow-up response. I'm sorry, Kathleen, who is that? The, the New York Citizens Audit Group. And who are they? They are a group that um, believe there to be um, some problems with the New York voter database and have made um, lengthy, uh, misleading, and erroneous claims about uh, how people are registered in the New York in NICE voter um, based on data that they have analyzed. But um, as has been the case with their first report and the follow-up, um, they, they have not allowed anyone to see the data and any manipulations they've done with it to come up with their conclusions. Uh, so we want to uh, put out information that gives factual information about how NICE voter operates, how the counties register voters, to dispel any claims that they are making. In terms of public outreach. Well, you know, on that subject, I just want to repeat what I said at the conference, which is that we should be not we should not be working from the assumption that our database is flawless. And that um, uh, but I agree with you that in reading what New York Citizens Audit wrote that uh, either they are ignorant of the system or are maliciously twisting data in order to support uh, uh, conclusions that are not warranted. But um, on the other hand, I don't want to um, get into a defensive position where we deny that there's ever anything wrong with our database. And um, uh, I hope that there is an ongoing internal audit process um, to proof our database. And I'm sure Ray has heard lots of stories about <laughs> so I, I, <laughs> problems from New York City, but um, I would, well, what? I would say that, um, you know, both in the initial response and the follow-up response, the registration process is a human process. So it involves, you know, uh, human entries often with bipartisan checks, so occasionally there will be human error that's associated with that. That's what happens when you have people working registration. Um, and we acknowledge that in our responses and continue to, that it's, it's a human process. I think there is a difference between occasionally people make mistakes and manipulating data to uh, outline a process which is not based in fact. And I think making that distinction is important, especially in this context, that yes, sometimes boards, both the city and, and the counties and the state will occasionally make ministerial errors on registration, and that's part of the process, and that's why we send out confirmation notices, and that's why we send out annual information notices, and what's currently taking place here. And I think those are two very different and distinct processes that we're talking about. I, I agree with that, and, uh, and I would also urge um, informing interested people in the process for correcting errors in the voter roll. And there are numerous processes available. Um, uh, and, you know, in the old days, it was the uh, precinct captain who went around and checked. <laughs> but those days are long gone. And I would also say that your point about being on the defensive, we, I, I believe we are on the offensive now and we have to be going into a presidential election because we cannot let mis- and disinformation stand. And we have to make sure that people have the faith that they should have in the integrity of our system. I completely echo Ray and Kristen's point about that. It is a human process. It's not perfect. We're not, never going to defend perfection, but we are. We want to defend the hard work that election workers at the county and state level are doing uh, to maintain this ever-moving database. Yes, changing every single day. And I think also just to kind of pile on is that sometimes it's a matter of the categorization of data. Mm -hmm. um, so the data might be indeed what they say it is, but it's not 
why they say this. For example, I would classify as both a duplicate and a clone, um, according to their terms, because I have three records in the statewide voter database, one from Nassau County when I lived down there, which has now been purged when I moved to Greene County. Um, and I have a voter record for Greene County, which has a different state voter ID than my Nassau County because there was a gap and also there was the launch of Nice Voter in between that time. Um, and then when I moved to Albany County, uh, I have my only active record, which has the same state voter ID as the Greene County, which is what it should because the state voter ID should move with you as you move from county to county. Um, so that's where I think they really kind of lack a lot of that context. And as far as us being also on the offensive and, and continually looking at the data and the quality of the data, uh, we've looked at or we have ex begun exploring other options for adding additional data sources for list maintenance purposes. Um, you know, what, right now we receive death information from the Department of Health, both at the state and the New York City level. Um, that's only for people who die in New York State. So if someone dies out of state, we're not receiving that information. We are exploring the possibility of looking at some data sources that would provide some of that information to us. Uh, the federal government, the EAC, is also looking for states that participate uh, in doing some data scrubbing with uh, Experian, because if anyone's going to know where you move, it's probably the Credit Bureau. Um, so we were, we're looking at possibly uh, participating in that as well. Thank you, Tom. But, <laughs> so let me just ask, like, when they uh, created this report, they distributed it to us, and who else do you know? Do they it's, distribute it's on it? their website. Um, I'm not sure of their entire distribution list, but they communicated out. But it's well, right okay. on their so when you do a so when you do a report in reaction to this, how do you distribute it? Then how do you? Uh, that'll be a discussion for uh, um, since the last response letter went out in April prior to my tenure. I'm not sure the details on how it went out, uh, but however uh, the co-executives and commissioners want it to be sent out, we will. Well, it just seems that they're sending theirs out, say, to the media. Let's take that example. Yes. And the media, say, runs the story, right. for example. I don't know if they have. They haven't. Okay. But if they send it to the media, it seems to me we need to respond well, to the same group so they get our well, side of the story well, as well. I think more significantly, they've been going to municipal boards mm -hmm. and asking yes. for resolutions. Yes. Oh, they have? Oh, yes. they have a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they have. Yes. They've been going to town board meetings, and they have a sample resolution on their website. And what's that, what's that resolution say? Um, that they're asking for a full end-to-end -end audit. Uh, is that what they're requesting if somebody come to do an audit? Yeah, what is their stated purpose? <laughs> what is their stated purpose? <laughs> to make us look bad. I'm not sure. I, I couldn't really articulate that. they want an audit, then you're not saying they want somebody to do an audit our system? But is, well, well I don't think right. we object to an audit no, uh, okay. if it's done properly so, yeah. and with well, knowledge of how our system works. But, 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 right. but what they're they they are trying to make conclusions that more people that ineligible people are living. Mm -hmm. I understand that, but I'm trying to understand what is going on with this report what, what because type of, what type of organization is it? Is it a, is it a corporation? Is it a nonprofit organization? And what are they? That's a good question. They're not, they're not government, obviously. Are they five hundred one c three? They're what? According to the they're five hundred one c three. 501c3, so they have officers and directors, and they file with the federal government? They should. Is this a New York-based organization that's only looking at New York State, or are yes. they doing this in other states? This particular organization is New York State. Strictly New York. York focused. Yeah. Got it. Well, again, I do agree with the idea that we don't want misinformation out there. I totally agree with that. You know, and, and, and frankly, you know, I'm not looking to defend a system that isn't perfect either, other than to just tell the facts. The facts right. are the facts, and the facts should get out there. If this group is disseminating stuff that isn't factual, we definitely need to refute that. We need to be factual in our presentation. But my poll or my goal is I don't want to have them distribute it mm -hmm. and us not, and have them get press and us not. I, it seems to me that if they're going to put it out there and into the public realm, we need to do the same to try to identify where this is going. If it's going to town boards, they need to see me what we're getting so they know that we aren't just you know, letting this go, that there is a, another side of the story, or, or here's the facts before you act. And to Chris's point, it is on the offensive, and, that, and that's why we've been taking this so seriously to get out, and so it doesn't appear on the def defensive, but rather yeah, putting enough. the good information out there. Commissioner, the original letter we sent was meant to go to county boards to help them 
counteract this because they were going into C county boards as well. Okay. Um, it has now become more widespread, and I do agree with you that we will we will put it out into all of our, our media contacts. We mm -hmm. can also certainly share it with town boards, many of whom have contacted us. Yeah, so, so, yeah. This is the letter you're working on now? Yeah. yeah. Might, I, might I suggest maybe be someone to every member of the state legislature? Yep. Yes. Sure. Yep. Maybe if we have the wherewithal, right. every mayor, every town supervisor, mm -hmm. every county executive, just so they're aware of the yeah. situation. Well, you know, the public should be aware of how our voting yeah. registration system but they works. And certainly nothing I mean, is perfect. No, know, no, no. As, but they should understand how it works. Because you're right, most people yeah. don't. It they is don't. complicated, as Tom was identifying in his example. Yeah. It does get complicated sometimes of exactly how records are kept in the state. Except when you move from county to county, not within a county. Right. right. County to county, county but county. also prior to nice voter, there was right. not a match system. Right. So, right. you know, it, it, yeah, there's now, a lot of context. Bottom so, line. Right. Bottom line that I think people want to hear is this. My understanding is that within a couple of days after each election, we get uploaded the names of any person who voted by absentee, in person, early, regular, whatever, right? Within we three days. Those? Three days. Three days. Yes. We cross check. But, yes. yes, we do. But, but it's not 100%. Right? I did. Doug, find something hard right now. Okay. All right, but, but I think that's part of the problem that they use. I understand, is that but the public has to know that to the, to the best of our ability, we cross-check every single person who voted in an election in an attempt to ferret out anybody who tried to vote twice. Yes, but you, we do. But you see, you just said every single person. We don't cross-check every single person. I said to the best of our ability. Okay, said, okay. We All try. right, I'm giving you a hard What's time, but I guess thing? it's the absolutism. So, there is no absolute. That, There's no absolute. We're going with, exactly. Only two things are absolute. You know, death and taxes. I don't want even one right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, what's, your, what's your expected time frame on this? Um, uh, Jennifer and I have worked on the letter, and it has gone through some rounds of edits, so I imagine we'll have this initial response uh, with uh, to be distributed within the coming weeks, I would say. Would yeah, would you send both documents? I don't know if I have even the first document, but no I'd like problem. to see both. We'll make sure you yeah, have it for sure. The, the, I think the goal on the most recent draft is to have it finalized in the well, next 24 to 48 yeah, hours, excellent. and we'll send that oh, to you with soon. the original. Yes. Okay. At least the first draft. Okay. I, okay. Great. In the spirit of ensuring that we're giving everything a, a, a deep dive and ensuring we're not making assumptions, there will be a secondary, more in-depth review of the information. Okay. To Commissioner Kellner's point, that we want to make sure we're not making assumptions and, and basing our actions on the thought of perfection, which you're never going to accomplish in any realm. Uh, so that will be a longer process as we attempt to uh, suss out some data. We're a little handicapped because, again, we haven't been provided the data as it was manipulated by the outside organization. So we have to try to make we have to try to look at stuff, you know, the best we can without having what they're using to make their assertion. That's going to take a minute, so we're going, to, we're going to work on that. And to Commissioner Casale's point, I strongly agree with the concept that we do not tolerate uh, or ignore any claims of uh, double voting or illegal voting. Exactly. And, and, and that indeed people have been prosecuted in New York in those rare cases where that's happened. And I must say, what I've seen of late responses both in the media and elsewhere the staff are doing a great job. In addition to the work they have to do every day, they got to spend time countering all this uh, I'll be fable, I guess the myths and fables out there. But they do a good job. They really do. Well I think it's also all the commissioners on the ground too, because a lot of them have reached oh, yeah. out to their mm -hmm. respective towns and They're county right governments there. and They're explained right to them what mm -hmm. the you know what the issue is and and uh, and have gotten um, the, the boards to uh, the town boards to go away from these resolutions that these individuals you know want to pass without any you know real understanding of what's going on. Okay, sorry. Are you, no. you done or you I am not. I have a few more things. Go, go ahead. And then, sorry. <laughs> no. um, it, but actually, it dovetails well into uh, in terms of public outreach for traditional media. We did release two press releases since the last board meeting. First, about National Poll Worker Recruitment Day on August 23rd, <coughs> and then in regards to the impersonation of county board officials on August 30th. Um, since last meeting, we've responded to inquiries regarding the certification of voting machines that happened at the last board meeting. And to Commissioner Casale's point, in the last week, we've responded to dozens of inquiries about the impersonation press release, including participating in phone, Zoom, and in-person interviews, 
and we continue to monitor coverage of that situation. Uh, various other media inquiries have come in throughout the month, but those are the big ones. In terms of social media, since we last met, we've launched a series called Fun Fact Fridays on our social media. Uh, that's an educational series to provide voters through our social media accounts factual information. And this all goes to the hopes of dispelling bad information that's out there. Every Friday we're putting up something on our social media that's just a fact about elections and voting. Something simple, uh, very user friendly, and we've created a schedule for these releases based on the timeliness of the information. Um, that goes to our Twitter, our Facebook, and our Instagram. Since our last meeting, we've had 12 posts on each of those. Um, engagement on all three sites is down from the last report that Jennifer gave and that the last report covered the primary. Uh, and now we're in uh, the lull of summer a little bit, but we continue to gain followers and get impressions on all of those and come up with new ways to engage with voters that way. Our email service contact list has grown to 866 subscribers. Uh, it may seem small, but it continues to be organic growth. In fact, just since last uh, uh, meeting on August 2nd, we actually had 24% growth from 700 to 866. So uh, we did send out three blast emails since our last meeting. One is about campaign finance and training webinars, and the other two about those press releases. Um, and we continue to work to organically grow our list. And lastly, a note from my end, September is National Voter Registration Month, uh, with September 19th being National Voter Registration Day. So we will be utilizing both traditional and social media, as well as our email service, to communicate the importance of that. Uh, with New Yorkers. So I want to pass it over to Jennifer to just give our grants update and then we'll be all set. Thank you. Great. I don't have much to report on the grants in the last month. We've continued to send out extensions for all of our grants that were extended in the state budget. Uh, we had a meeting with the Department of Defense and the Federal Voting Assistance Program regarding our new grant that we received for enhancements for military and overseas ballot program. And we're continuing to work on that, so not really too much to report with. Mm -hmm. What's the status of the annual report? <coughs> the, 20, the, 20, on August 2nd, the 2020 annual report is actually getting its final proofing from our unit um, today. Actually, it's ongoing right now. We hope to have that to Ray and Kristen, I would say, within the next 24 to 48 hours. I guess that begs the question, were the, I guess, was that 2020? 2020. I guess it's 2021, 2022, any? 2021, we have drafts in from a number of units. We don't have it from everyone yet, but we are following up with each of the units with our PAO staff. Okay. Anything else? Or... No? Good. Okay, thank you. And on to ITU and Mike Tabor. Yes, thank you, Commissioner. Good afternoon. Uh, well, I'll build off of what's already been uh, reported on uh, many of the projects that we've been involved in. Um, the automatic voter registration project, uh, we continue as the IT staff uh, to engage regularly and meet with the uh, New York State Rapid Development Team from ITS. Um, our IT unit also continues to meet with business users, internal to SBOE and other agencies, and with ITS on environment build-out, requirements definition, and deployment strategy. Uh, we, of course, have uh, also been involved in the space expansion and build-out. Um, in particularly uh, heavily involved in relocating personnel from various locations within the building. Um, and that uh, is also the case as the agency continues to grow in terms of staff. Uh, we've been supporting onboarding of new personnel and supporting some increased uh, work from home activities or preparations for them. Uh, related to that, we have also begun deploying an endpoint refresh process, replacing uh, end of life user devices such as laptops uh, and related peripheral equipment. Uh, we talked earlier about the, uh, the website refresh. Progress continues uh, to move along with that. As we meet with uh, the ITS Web Services Group, we do still anticipate rollout by the end of this year, early 2024. Uh, and as uh, we've mentioned previously, in parallel, we also engage a third-party vendor on improvements to the display of historical information on our site and that also is anticipated to be complete by the end of this year. Regarding the uh, public campaign finance and uh, agency-wide campaign finance system refresh, uh, the contractual matters were already uh, discussed. Um, we are eager to begin uh, supporting that uh, development. Uh, we also <coughs> very recently hired a new uh, technical lead in ITU who will specifically focus on overseeing 
the development of that new system. Uh, and we've worked extensively with external stakeholders, such as the New York State Statewide Financial System, who will interface with and provide data to the PCFB systems. And prior to implementation of that new system, our development team continues to enhance existing CAPAS FIDA systems to accommodate new functionality for PCFB. What, what's the timeline for the PCFB system? For the new system, uh, I, the exact timeline will be developed, uh, provided with, in concert with the vendor uh, when they are fully engaged. Uh, we anticipated uh, full deployment within, I believe, five years before all systems are fully deployed. Um, we're prioritizing, the, the intention is, obviously this will be discussed more uh, when the specific vendor is, is onboarded, but the intention is that we'll prioritize uh, those items that are needed to support PCFB and to make sure that they can do their, their job as, uh, you know, as the new election cycle begins. I don't know if anyone else wants to add anything to that. Oh, OGS is currently negotiating a contract with the vendor. Five years seems like a long time. To, well, this is for everything. This is for our existing CAPAS, CITUS program, so ballot access, um, you know, financial filing, public reporting. This is an overhaul of all of our systems. So hopefully it will be less, but... And, and it's really, not a simple project. Right, and like, like Mike was saying, it depends on once the, all the paperwork is done and we can actually start engaging with the vendor. Um, we'll sit down with them to kind of decide based on when that happens what we prioritize. So if we can actually get something done and completed for PCFB and it makes sense for their calendar, and we'll do so. If we're going to miss a certain window, then we might focus on other systems just so we can kind of get work done. So do you have a sense, Michael, when this vendor's going to be brought on board? Is there any... Well, and that's, that's less a technical matter than it is a, uh, a matter of the contract negotiation. Right. So I, I am but you're not, not uncertain. I, I don't have any... Have you guys heard anything from OGS as to when this is going to happen? Um, you know, I would think, I don't want to give a date, but <coughs> we just answered a question from OGS last week that would indicate to me it, it's yeah. drawing to a close. Good. So I'm hopeful. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Um, I'll just mention uh, conference attendance. Obviously, uh, we were in attendance, uh, as with many others, at the, uh, the ECA meeting in Niagara Falls uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, later this month, um, our Chief Information Security Officer, Ben Spear, and I will be joining with elections IT directors and staff um, from across the nation at the National Association of Secretaries of State meeting. It's called a Tech Talk meeting. So it's all the, uh, the various CIOs and CISOs and other technical folks. Um, uh, speaking of security, uh, we are finalizing processing of the county submissions from the annual uh, cybersecurity regulation compliance check that was due on August 1st. Uh, 54 counties had submitted and were in regular contact with the remaining counties on their progress. We've achieved near full compliance from most counties outstanding of two policy areas, uh, which the State Board previously notified counties we would work through as part of a workshop series later this year. Uh, those policy areas are data classification and continuity of operations planning. Uh, the completion of the compliance review leads into the beginning of our cybersecurity reassessments beginning in the next week. Uh, working with NYSEC, the Secure Election Center has developed a framework for validating compliance with the regulation apart from the annual attestation. So we're going to actually go to the counties, follow up and check, see that they are doing what they attested they were doing. Um, and that serves as a follow up to the original risk assessment that was conducted uh, back in 2019. The first two pilot counties have completed their initial review and are now in the process of submitting supporting artifacts. Uh, we'll begin outreach to the remaining county boards to schedule their initial reviews uh, for a period that works best for them and their IT teams. The goal is to complete initial reviews by end of the year and finalize the artifact review in the first half of 2024. Uh, two weeks ago, the State Board released its mandatory cybersecurity awareness training for the county boards and the State Board staff. The training is uh, quite comprehensive and covers a range of topics. 
going forward in future years, the training will include a testing out option. Uh, to date, just over 200 users out of approximately 900 have accessed their portal and 165 have completed the training. Uh, and lastly, uh, over the next month, uh, Ben Spear will be traveling around the state with the uh, State Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services to inform county emergency managers and sheriffs about the uh, support election officials will need in applying to the Federal Homeland Security Grant Program or mandatory election security funds. Uh, we will also be engaging with national partners, uh, as mentioned before, at the Tech Talk for the National Association of Secretaries of State, and we'll be uh, attending the uh, uh, New York State Local Government IT Directors Association Fall Conference, which is the Association for County IT Directors. And that's all I have. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Well, that completes the unit updates for today. And so we'll move on to old business, of which I have none. Nobody else has any either. So then I'll move on to new business, and we have something under new business, and that's election security as a discussion item. Sure. Okay. I would I say that the topics that we were going to discuss got covered during the unit reports yeah. in okay. terms of you know both uh, you know combating disinformation as well as the ongoing issue uh, with uh, people impersonating uh, election administrators. I feel that. Is it fair to say you have nothing more I have that topic? I would just add that we're working with the Department of Homeland Security and CISA, and they have offered to the counties de-escalation training for poll workers or train the trainer of de-escalation training. So we're taking all of the steps that we can to ensure that everyone is safe and secure in every election, but notably as we go into the presidential year. Uh, that's all we have under new business, and now we have executive session if needed. Is it needed? I'm not hearing any need for that. All right, and that'll bring us to the end of the meeting. Uh, unless there's something else someone wants to bring up, I would uh, entertain a... What do you want to talk about our next meeting? We could, if you'd like. What's, yeah. the, uh, what's the idea here? Next meeting um, is the topic. I'm not sure that we'll need anything before the beginning of December. So if we get some a few dates for the beginning of December, we can either discuss that now or we could do what we've done. What's the final date for December 15th? December 15th. December 15th. By the 15th? Okay. So we can collect dates and then circle back with you guys. Okay. That's great. Yeah, that okay. seems to have I mean, if you need a meeting between now and then, of course, great. let us know. And we, yeah. now it, it's, I'll just a little off topic. Is there any expectation of a need for a uh, meeting of the PCMB in the near future? Um, the last I heard, no. They were they didn't they so didn't. So they don't need a meeting either. You're saying? I don't know. That they know of in the they may, I think they this the beginning of December is when they would need a meeting as well. It but is. certainly or, okay. we were. It might be the week before, the last week of November, if the governor signs the, uh, yeah, the bill we, we changing have the date. That could change the That could change the yeah. change. Yeah. I don't think the bill has gone out yet. No, it has not been no, delivered. No, no election right. bills have gone to the governor. Okay. Yet. Right. But that bill requires, is there, is there a 90-day uh, yes. yeah. enactment period? Yes. Which would play around with the December. September, October, November. So yes. this is September already, October, November. December. Yeah. Yeah. Time is getting short. All right. Well, when she signs it. So we will certainly circle back. Yeah. Okay. Cheryl and so there's, there's no immediate need no. for it. No. Yeah. Yeah. None right now. Yeah. I see your point is that even if she signs it today, yeah. it wouldn't go into effect. Well, so she signs it today. It'll after be after the first part of December. Otherwise, it's yeah. The bill provides for payments to begin December first. Right. Um, so we're past that window right now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then the question is, does she sign it that way or that? Well, we'll see. We don't know when this is going to. There's other issues we can talk about later. <laughs> yeah. Implementation, not, yeah. not on the yeah. merits. Yeah. Right. All right. We leave the merits to you guys. Well, I think it might be best if we just leave it, and if the staff feels there's a need for a meeting, you'll let us know, and we'll try to schedule something. Why don't, uh, why don't you two get together and get some proposed dates in December? Let us know what works for you. Sure. We'll figure yeah. it out. We'll do so. Great. Okay. And I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Thank you very much.